I personally have a big soft spot in my heart for philosophy, so let me uh, grab that field. How about philosophy? How important is philosophy to what you guys do, and how can one adapt one's knowledge or skills or background in philosophy and put it to work within uh, the context of the Singularity Institute? Yeah. Um, philosophy, of course, is this really broad category of human inquiry, and there's a lot of uh, branches of philosophy that are not very useful to solving our problems. Um, of course, there's sort of the what's sometimes called continental philosophy, things like postmodern philosophy that are uh, almost like an art form or a literary form and not very uh, well informed often by scientific results or correct math. Uh, and so that's not going to be very useful to us. A lot also of um, what's called analytic philosophy is based around the idea of analyzing our concepts by using our intuitions. And that's also not going to be very useful to what we're doing. So the type of philosophy that's useful to the, for the problems we're trying to solve is sometimes called formal philosophy uh, or the kind of most uh, hard scientific versions of naturalistic philosophy. Uh, and in particular, in formal philosophy, um, the stuff about the foundations of probability theory and how to deal with logical uncertainty and also about uh, mathematical decision theory, um, those are probably the most relevant uh, subfields of formal philosophy that are useful for uh, solving the types of problems that we need to solve. Um, for example, I mean, all existing decision theories when they try to reason about um, calculating the expected utility of changing the decision mechanism at work in some radical way, uh, they run into uh, a problem called Loeb's theorem um, that sort of uh, disallows all current decision theories from reasoning sensibly about modifying the decision mechanism. Uh, and we need to understand that better in order to be able to predict whether a strongly self-modifying AI will end up doing good things rather than bad things. Yeah, uh, on, that, on that topic of whether it would do good things or bad things, let me ask you this. Ray Kurzweil is often criticized for being way too optimistic in his assessment about the outcome or the positive effects of a technological singularity. So... In your own estimate, what are our chances of surviving such a phenomenon? Uh, and one of the things that I want to share with you uh, before you give me your answer is this. I'm always shocked uh, by the replies I get from people when I ask this question. Uh, and let me tell you, Michael Anissimo, for example, uh, said, if I remember, 20%. He gave us 20%. He considers himself optimist, and yet he gave us 20% chances of surviving such an event. So let me ask you, what, in your opinion, is our chance of survival and why? Yeah, well, let me start by saying that um, often people think of us as uh, maybe being the opposite side of some kind of coin with Ray Kurzweil because we're operating under different concepts of what the singularity is. Um, but on the other hand, uh, in a way, Ray Kurzweil's vision of what the future will be like in the next few decades is much more similar to ours. Um, because it is true, for example, that a lot of technologies show long-term exponential trends. And this means radical changes uh, such that the future will be much more different than the current uh, uh, era than a lot of people intuitively might think because they have an intuitive linear model of how things are going to progress. So in a sense, uh, Ray Kurzweil's picture of the future is much more similar to ours than uh, to the average person's. But on the other hand, uh, yes, Ray Kurzweil is much more optimistic about what will happen when we create superhuman artificial intelligence. Um, the difficulty in estimating you know, our chances of survival is that it depends entirely uh, on what we do, or hugely on what we decide to do about it. So uh, if we decide, if, if the human race decides to basically spend as much research and uh, resources and effort on uh, making sure that AI is safe when it's first created as it does now, then I have very low chances. Uh, uh, I would give us very low chances of uh, survival of the AI, uh, arrival of AI. 
Um, whereas if we decide to start devoting a lot more resources towards solving these problems, the probability of our survival goes up quite a bit. So it depends hugely on what we do about it. Um, right now, I'm very uncertain of uh, the people of our ability to um, persuade the world to invest a lot more resources in working on this problem. So, you know, my chances of uh, surviving this cent of humanity surviving this century are you know, not that high, maybe 5% or something. Uh, but I have huge error bars about that. Um, but remember that that number can move a lot in the positive or the negative direction, depending on what we decide to do about the biggest risks that face humanity. So in a way, your mission statement is in fact to improve the odds of us surviving that event. That's right. Yeah, improve the odds of us surviving and improving the odds of it not just being a survival issue, but being a really good thing for humanity. To survive and prosper. To survive and flourish, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. So, look, the, the very last question that I always ask of my guests is this. What is the one thing or the single most important message that you would like our viewers and listeners to take away from this interview with you today? Superhuman AI is coming this century. By default, it will be disastrous for humanity. Uh, if you want to make AI a really good thing for humanity, please donate to organizations working on that. Or if you are a researcher, help us solve particular problems in mathematics, decision theory, and cognitive science. Fantastic. And, and in order to do any of those things, you can always contact me, uh, Luke Malhauser, Executive Director of the Singularity Institute at luke at singularity.org. Luke Malhauser, thank you very much for being on Singularity One-on-One -on -one today. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you.